I was actually expecting it to be the Philadelphia 76ers, I really did. I had a whole thing I was going to talk about with Embiid and Harden and their free throw shooting ability. I was going to even sneak in some Embiid versus Jokic talk, but the trade to Philly did not happen. James Harden is now on the Brooklyn Nets. They are the favorites to get out of the East, and in this video, I'm going to go over their strengths and weaknesses as a trio and grade them. What strengths do they have as a trio that will make them really hard to beat in the playoffs? And what weaknesses do they have that might hurt them when things aren't going well? So for the number one good thing here is that this team has multiple ways to score if one thing is taken away from them. The best teams that win in the playoffs have guys that can score at the rim, get shots off from the mid-range, and from the three-point line. If you have someone that can do all three of those things efficiently, you have a chance at a championship. When the game slows down, teams try to take away your strengths and force you into your least efficient ways of scoring. Some teams want to force you to take mildly contested mid-range shots all night. Where are you taking away a strength when factoring in all three of these guys? Kevin Durant and Kyrie are both high percentage shooters from the three, mid-range, and the rim. James Harden is a high percentage guy from the rim and the three-point line. The other team's head coach can't just say, oh, let's take away this from this player and we'll live with it. No, you can't take away one thing because they all can score from every level of the court. I'm genuinely trying to think, what team ever had three guys where they can score from all three levels of the court like this? In the playoffs when games become more of a half-court setting and defenses are really locked in, a lot of players can get exposed because they don't have effective moves in the half-court. You can't just say, oh, we're going to expose Durant, we're going to expose Harden in the half-court. No, everybody is a threat from all three levels and proven they can score on the elite of the elite in the half court. Being able to score one-on-one -on -one buckets with three minutes left in a tight playoff game is one of the most important skills in basketball, and the Nets have three of those guys on their team. The second strength they have on offense is an underrated one, and that's free throw shooting. KD, Kyrie, and Harden are all 85% shooters from the free throw line in the playoffs, which is actually insane. Your team is really going to have a hard time staying out of foul trouble. Harden gets to the free throw line 12 times per game, KD gets to the line 9 times a game, and Kyrie only 3 a game, but he was up at about 5 last year. You better hope you have the guard and forward depth to keep up in case someone gets in foul trouble, and we know someone is definitely going to get in foul trouble when you have to defend these three. I wonder if a team has ever had 3 guys that shot 85% from the free throw line when you factor in attempts per game. You know you can trust them on technical fouls, and when they are fouled getting to the rim, those points add up and will make the offense awesome efficiency wise. Not only are the Nets going to have this massive offensive talent advantage, they have already shown in the few games they have played, they got a great idea how to maximize that talent with their spacing and off ball movement. Joe Harris has already been going crazy this year, I don't see how he doesn't benefit even more next to these three. Harris is shooting 51% on 5 3 point attempts per game, he's going to get going on threes and cuts to the rim when defenses are freaking out about closing off Kyrie, Harden, and KD. Some other things that are good about this trade, if someone is ever out with rest or the league's new contact tracing protocol, two of those three are more than capable of having an increased role on a given night. It's a protection in case of an injury. That's one of the pluses of a big three. If somebody is hurt, you still have two really good guys to carry your team on a night. I mean, you have the 2018 MVP, you have the 2017 and 2018 Finals MVP, and someone who made one of the biggest shots ever in the NBA Finals, like this team is going to be able to score, and a bad defensive night from them might not matter. This is going to be a soft team on the interior, and that hurts them in two ways. Defending the paint and defensive rebounds. The Nets, as I am making this video, are 25th in defensive rebounding percentage, one of the worst marks in the league. This team without Jared Allen is now weak at defending the rim and getting defensive rebounds. I watched Thomas Bryant on the Wizards look like Joel Embiid against them. Guys like Embiid, Giannis, DeMontis Sabonis, Bam Adebayo, and whoever else you want to think of that's a forward or a center that can score inside is going to have a big game against them most likely, and I'm sure above average players will be able to find moments to get going. DeAndre Jordan is fine in the regular season, but once the playoff starts, he's cooked. I don't trust him at all. He has no chance against any of the real elite guys. People have complained about this team's lack of tenacity and effort on defense at times and on the defensive glass, and I don't see how that changes when you add Harden into the mix. Some nights are going to be a layup line. The Nets will probably need to find a buyout option later in the year. I also just don't see how in the 2021 playoffs you can have Jeff Green on the floor to close out games. It's going to be the same story in those tight playoff games. Too slow of a decision maker, not enough rebounds, shaky defense, and very little toughness. This team currently constructed is not ready to slow down guys like Giannis Embiid, like Toronto and Miami did in the playoffs. They don't have the personnel for that. 
The Heat and the Raptors did a great job as a team, forcing those guys into tough shots and getting the ball out of their hands before they even had a chance to get momentum. It's going to be interesting to see guys like KD going up against Giannis and Harden going up against Drew. The problem, of course, is in the playoffs, it just takes one bad matchup and all of a sudden KD, Harden, and Kyrie's offensive ability is equalized if the other team breaks them down and gets wide open threes. Joe Harris, Bruce Brown, and whoever else is on the Nets bench is going to have to help pick up the slack on the perimeter defense. Landry Shaman has been horrible, as I mentioned earlier, so we'll see if he picks it back up. Harden isn't a bad defender. The problem with Harden on defense is that you have to make your scheme at times switch everything because Harden will just not move or make the effort to go over screens, which may put Kyrie in a difficult spot or create a mismatch. Kevin Durant being your second best defender means you have a more healthy defense, but him being the best one on this team might not be the greatest thing for a playoff series. And the final thing is, how does Kyrie do in this third option role? Like he's the clear third guy here, I don't know what else to say. He's always been the number one or number two guy. Is being the third option something that will bother him? Does that mess up his rhythm when he wants to pull up off of a screen or when he's doing his in-between game and shooting mid-range shots? I don't know, it's just a question. I'm just mostly thinking of what could go wrong because there will be nights where he doesn't get into rhythm like he could in the past because Harden and Durant have more favorable matchups at their position. But I trust the Nets to find a way to make it work with rotations and when guys are sitting out for rest or they have to go through the contact tracing protocol. I'm mostly nitpicking here. These guys are all veterans in the league. They understand the deal. The goal is to win a championship. It's going to be really hard to mess this up offensively, but the small chance of someone not being in rhythm and it affecting their shot quality is always a possibility. So yeah, they lack the personnel at the moment to really get stops in a late round playoff series. The lack of size and tenacity to secure rebounds and defend the rim will hurt them, but that might not matter honestly. They probably make the finals this year and next year. The grade I give is an A. This is the most talented offensive trio in my life. This is definitely a team that can win multiple championships. I think the question is right now, which team has the best chance at guarding them this playoffs? I guess you can start with the Bucks. Middleton is a solid defender, but probably can get picked on by someone like Durant. Drew Holiday and Giannis are obviously elite. Boston has Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum. They're all pretty physical and quick. Miami, I think, is going to have a really tough time with this specific trio. I think they're going to be cooked because they got to play Robinson and Harrow a lot of minutes. I don't like their guard defense at all. Philly with Simmons and Embiid is going to be tough. They are physical and not going to make it easy for them. I guess we can move to the West where I think three teams have a chance. The Lakers have quick guards to put on Harden and Kyrie, plus LeBron and AD. The Clippers with Kawhi and Paul George have the size to bother them. Beverly, I'm sure, will get up for that Kyrie matchup. They can go to Obaka or Zubats depending on the night. And the third team I'd say is the Suns, Bridges, CP3, Booker, and Jay Crowder. It's not perfect, but all those guys like competing on that end. I like Booker more as a one-on-one -on -one defender than a team defender. But yeah, those are the only three teams I trust in the West to guard them. I think everyone else is pretty much cooked. So yeah, that's the video. If you made it to the end, I appreciate it. I was going to have a different video out today, but this trade happened. So I'm going to put that video back for a few days. So I'll see you guys soon.